Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com coming at you with 2023 Topps Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition Dual Case Break. Pick your team number seven. 24 boxes total. A pretty long break. So kick back, relax, settle in. And let's make this uh, let's make this happen. Big thanks to this group for getting in on it. On the first of the month. It's the first of the month. Ben with Last Bot Mojo Reds. And it, since this is a brand new month, we're going with a, a new font, a Sans Serif font, Lato. For you font fans out there, Lato. There's Hobby Editions. 12 boxes, one auto a box. And actually, let's not forget to take this out of our inventory system here. All right, lots going on in the baseball world as well. What, what, what moves did you like, ladies and gentlemen, if any? What do you think were the, the biggest moves, the most impactful moves? A lot of pitching being traded. We didn't see a lot of hitting being moved around, but we did see a lot of pitching moved around, so. So we'll see. My Dodgers really didn't do that much. They got Kike Hernandez a week or so ago. They picked up some Lance Lynn. That's, he's going to help. He's making his first start tonight. And then um, and then they got uh, Ryan Yarbrough from the Royals today. So kind of shore up that bullpen deck. Not, as a Dodgers fan, not super confident about... Um, I'm not super confident about uh, the Dodgers starting rotation in the playoffs. I wish they would have shored that up a little bit. Spencer, this is the dual case break. You can tell these are hobby boxes right here. Dual case break number seven. We also have a schedule that we use regularly. And Nightbot frequently drops that schedule. And I would encourage everyone to keep an eye on that schedule right there so you know what's going on. And you can see what are the other breaks lined up, if any, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Jeremy's saying, for those who don't know, Money Mike is Michael Harris. Is that what they call him out there? Your teams. Uh, you should get an order confirmation, Spencer. That'll tell you what teams you purchase. You're not in this break. Lance and Lynn is your boy. Hotty Toddy, is that what they call him? Do we know about that on the West Coast? Yeah, it's tea with whiskey in it, right? And honey? Or lemon? Or both? It's a good, uh, good remedy, good cold remedy. Some people use bourbon. All right, so this is hobby edition. So we're expecting uh, uh, one auto per box. Looking for guys like this, Corbin Carroll, but parallels is what we want to see. That's going to go to Randy the Diamondbacks. But all of those could add up, so especially if they grade out nicely. We're also looking for, remember to hold on to those Otanis. And uh, the Ronald Acuna Juniors, Topps is bringing back that, that MVP buyback program. Remember when they did that last year with 
Aaron Judge and why am I blanking on who was the NL MVP last year? We got a Ryan McMahon to 299, a little color match with that purple. Goldschmidt, right. Thank you, Grizzlies. I don't know why I blanked on that. And your autograph, first auto in the first box, 182 out of 250. Will Brennan. That's going to go to the Guardians, John G with the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. That's right, Brandon saying Goldschmidt as well. It's all coming back to me now, but they're bringing back that MVP buyback program at participating hobby shops. You're, check with your local hobby shop for that. And I think base, you get a certain amount of credit to the store, to your local card shop. And then if they're numbered to a certain amount, then that, that amount keeps going up. And I'm not sure what Topps is doing with that. Here's Ken Waldachuk for the A's. It's to uh, Aqua Lava to 199. What are they gonna do with that? We'll do an autograph recap at the end. Which will be a little while from now. We got this case, we got one more. All card ship, of course. And obviously with such a long break for our shipping team to sort and ship out, just give them a little patience. If you're not in this break and you're like, man, is there anything else I can do while I'm waiting? You can. The Fanatics live stream is up tonight. And I think this is our first night, and I think it should be seven nights a week from here on out. Seven nights a week? Are we doing seven nights a week? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Yeah, we're doing seven nights a week. And then I think YouTube will be six nights a week. The only night we're not doing YouTube would be Sunday night. So Teddy and I actually will be teaming up on Sunday nights for, uh, for Fanatics Live, which should be a lot of fun. So download the uh, Fanatics Live app for now on iOS only. They're developing an Android version still sort of a beta version. They're still working on the finishing touches on it. Well, I imagine they'll, well, I mean, technically it could, could always be a, uh, suppose it could always be in, a, in beta. Because they'll always be doing updates. But yeah, still, still in sort of the early stages, but, you know, they've got the core part of it ready, so we may as well just dive into that app, start start working on it, and then we'll give them some feedback on uh, any... This only had one card in it. Maybe some other pack must have felt thicker. But, um, yeah, so check it out. But there is an Android version and a desktop version on the way, too. And the auto popping early. That is Leover Paguero. 65 out of 150 for the Buccos. That'll be for John Samuelson and the Pirates. Crystal Bees is off to buy an iPhone. You know, it might be it might be a lot cheaper just to buy a uh, buy like an iPad Mini or a used iPad or something like that. There's Jose Abreu at 250. So it kind of scales up the iPhone app into a iPad screen, but uh, it's a way to it's a way to use it. That's how I use it. You know, so treat yourself. Got a nice Gunnar Henderson for Sean Maddock, Prism Parallel. And we've got a nice Jordan Walker, 26 out of 99 for the Cardinals. That's going to be for Chris Parent and the Redbirds. It's a 
Riley Green refractor for the Tigers. That'll be for Michael P. All right, another box in the books. Next box. How do we feel about the trading deadline, ladies and gentlemen? Any comments? Anyone? You know, did, what's your team? Did you like what they did or didn't do? Talk to me. Keep me coming during this two hour break. Does this trade just does it does do any trade changes? Does it change the fortunes of any team in a dramatic way? I, I wish we, we we should have looked at like World Series odds before. We should have looked it up bef like a week ago, and then what they are like tomorrow. Gilo saying Royals suck. Think they added anybody? Think they added some players? In a couple trades that might be beneficial for the future. Grizzlebees is Mets. My Metsies did okay. Got rid of a lot of old guys. Yeah, got younger, retooled a little bit. Getting Luis Angel Acuna was, I think, a big deal. That was, a good, that was some good business by the Mets. And paid Bobby Moneo one million, which is like nothing right now to these days, right, Jeremy? The way players getting paid these days, a million dollars is a drop in the bucket. Getting, uh, getting Jack Flaherty. I'm glad the Orioles looked like they were going to be a little aggressive in the trade window. All right, we got Jermaine Palacios. For the Tigers, that's going to be for Michael. Grizzleby saw a tweet liking the Mets trading Scherzer, the Rangers, and Verlander. The Astros was like the choker snapping the pool cue in half and making the thugs battle to the death. There's Garrett Cole to three ninety nine for the Yankees. That'll be for Matt. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a disappointing season for the Mets, but but I think you know they're they're tearing the Band-Aid off. They're making some good moves. They're getting some good players back. You know, they've got deep pockets. I'm sure they'll be looking for some big names, make some moves in the off season, and you know, get this guy back and. There's Alec Manoa, photo negative. For the Blue Jays, that'll be for Brad. What a weird season for Alec Manoa. Another box. Chris will be saying that the Mets window to win was maybe last year. And Verlander left it open for this year. They were realistic to cut bait now.
I like this. Uh, I don't know what what MLB Network calls this. Maybe is it big hit or big inning or something like that? I like the. Uh, I like the sort of yeah MLB big inning. I like the sort of red zoney sort of look feel that they're 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 having here. Got three different baseball games going on right now. Right, that's good call, Grizzlebees. I gotta I gotta be careful about what I say to Manoa. A 95 mile per hour fastball may slip out of his hand and nail me in the face. His control has been so wacky this year. He might get me from wherever he is right now. No IG today, just YouTube and Fanatics Live. In fact, probably no IG for the near future while we get Fanatics Live into a good good groove. Yep, Taylor Ward. Wait, what is he on like the 60 day IL because of that? That is a classic matchup. g pointing out that the Mets and Royals are playing each other. Phillies beat the Marlins. Now, IG has not gone the way of the Dodo. IG is like, uh, what's IG like right now? It's like a, a, a panda, right? Maybe a once endangered species, but we're going we're gonna to be building a... Uh, we might build build that back up, repopulate Instagram. No, there'll be personal on Fanatics Live. I don't think we have any today. I think we'll do we'll have a we'll have some personal breaks. I think maybe to, to start, maybe a couple times during the week, and we'll look to look to expand that. Anything, Joe? No, I'm good, sir. Hey, Thank you. How's it going? You too. We got a gold, Luis Robert, 44 out of 50. I was in Chicago in the National last week and, you know, took some. Uh, some rideshare services to uh, to my hotel to the uh, convention center. There was a lot of a lot of people who were obviously Cubs and White Sox fans there. And saw a guy who was so frustrated with the White Sox. He was like, he was he was bummed. Only fans, right? Oh, you saw. I didn't know you were a fan of Only Fans, Jill. You found our stream there. There is Matthew Batten. Uh, you do you batten down hatches? Is it batten down? Is that the right word? John Samuelson with the Friars. There's Jose Miranda, three out of 25. <laughs> you got him, Grizzleby. Matthew batting 100. Is he batting 100? Is he even up? Gilo, speaking of Gilo, Gabe's a, um, a Royals fan. Did I did I see some some deadline buzz about maybe Salvador Perez getting traded? Was there any credibility or seriousness to that, or was it just it was just internet speculation that the uh, that MLB Network was just re uh, rehashing, reporting? Have it on an, on an extension. 
you know, I was just kind of half watching MLB Network while I was getting ready for work earlier today, so. But I thought I saw something like that flash by the screen. He signed through 2026, which would be, which would be a, a great time to trade him with a lot of years left. It's not like he's a two-month rental. Certainly some buzz, Gabe's saying. Not sure how much truth there was to it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they dealt him. He deserves better at this point in his career. Maybe an off-season move. I mean... A lot of, yeah, I was going to say a lot of teams could use a catcher. Yankees, Red Sox. And with the DH, you could probably, you could probably, uh, you know, kind of preserve Salvador Perez's legs. So if you have a good backup catcher or a good second catcher, it's maybe a little bit better with the glove or can withstand the rigors of, of being behind the dish. Give Salvador Perez a little rest. That could definitely help too. Right, and they, they got MJ Melendez. Yeah, although he's not even catching, right? It's a different guy who's doing pretty good. So maybe that makes sense. Maybe that'll be an off-season move. Speaking of the Royals, auto popping early, Drew Waters. Drew Rodgers runs deep. That's going to be for Stephen Carr. No, check that. That's going to be for Zach. Zachary G and the Royals. And we'll never be Say a Suzuki to 75. Did the Cubs do enough to make it to the playoffs? Maybe it's playing, playing better. And they were looking, they're, they're going to be buyers. There was a lot of rumors about Stroman being moved, Bellinger being moved. But then, but then they became buyers for the most part. Nice. Futera sold out? Nice. Thank you, Mike. Unfortunately, though, you're going to have to wait a while. Check the schedule. Check the break schedule that Nightbot just dropped. And um, I'll give you an idea of when, we'll, when you're gonna be seeing that. There's Fernando Tatis Jr., 350. Card sliding around here. The only final today is uh, is in Miami. Phillies beat the Marlins 3-1. We've got a few games that haven't started yet. Red Sox are in Seattle. Diamondbacks are in San Francisco. And the A's are in Los Angeles. Lance Lynn, new Dodger. First start, of, uh, first start with the Dodgers since the trade. Rockies are up 1-0 on the Padres in the middle of the second. At the end of the fourth, Mets leading the Royals 1-0. Bottom of the fourth, Guardians at Astros. Astros leading 2-0. They got two men on. Middle of the fourth, Cubs have already put 10 runs on the Reds. Reds were really hot for like a month. 
And then they've cooled off considerably. The Cubs are leading the Reds 10-2 in the middle of the fourth. In Texas, uh, White, uh, Rangers leading the White Sox 1-0. Twins leading the Cardinals 1-0, bottom of the sixth. Braves leading the Angels in the top of the seventh 2-1. Angels have runners on. Orioles leading the Blue Jays 7-3, bottom, uh, top of the eighth. Rays at Yankees, Yank Rays being, uh, Rays shutting out the Yankees 5-0 at this point. And the Brewers are leading the Nationals 6-3, bottom of the seventh. Okay, you got a Ricardo Pepe in your wax party box. Nice. Color Blast? Yeah, he's really good. All right, see you, Evan. Aaron, yes, it is soccer break time, but check the schedule. This is why the schedule is important. We're, we're still an hour and a half. We're still a couple hours away from getting to that soccer break. We just started a dual case break. So check the schedule, go run some errands, and then we'll have, we'll, we'll have that ready in a couple hours. Right, I gotta finish this break, then I gotta, I'm gonna be starving after this break. I gotta fuel up, gotta go through some more orders, and then get that Futera break going, but something like that should be well worth the wait. Got a Stephen Kwan, photo negative, but yeah, Gilo, Ricardo Pepe was probably, his rookie year probably was one of the biggest chases in whatever set we did. He was with, I think, Dallas for a little bit, and was just banging in goals, and now he's in Europe now. He's with PSV, Eindhoven this year after being with Osberg and then being on loan for part of the season. But he's only 20 years old, doesn't turn 21 until January. Um, and he's American, supposed to be one of the, one of the big, big, uh, big names. And he's a forward, right? He's a goal scorer. So that's, that's good for the hobby. And we got, uh, I thought it was going to be Josh Young. Here's Josh Smith. One, hey, sorry, Josh Smith. 187 out of 19. Just disrespect. He's probably watching this break right now and being like, come on. Come on, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not like Josh Young, but, you know, cut me some slack here. That'll be for Tristan and the Rangers. Yep, I mean, he should be on Team USA more regularly from from here on out. At 20 years old, he's got probably two or three World Cup cycles in him. 270 out of 399, Jazz Chisholm. For the Marlins, Jonathan. Candelario's two for two in his Cubs debut? Wasn't his Cubs debut many, many years ago? Was he two for two in his Cubs debut many years ago? Candelario's been having a nice season. That was a good pickup. Ah, return debut. You gotta be specific, Rex. We're, we're, we're sticklers for, for specifics. Yeah, I was going through the scoreboard and I noticed that it was only, only the fourth inning. Candelario just is gonna be the guy that helps Rex's Cubs go to the World Series. That's it, they were just a Candelario away.
I mean, the, the Cubs are in an interesting spot. You know, I don't. They've yeah, they're they're five games from first, but they got to leapfrog the Brewers. Wild card is probably their best bet. They're three and a half games back. They got to leapfrog the Marlins and then the Brewers again. That's kind of crowd. That's a kind of crowded space. Could be interesting. I think the Cubs are definitely on the outside looking in. They got a they got a few teams ahead of them that are going to be difficult to catch up with, but they're within striking distance. Dansby Swanson just hit a home run. All right, and Otto's popping early here in this hobby case. Connor Capel. That will be for Stephen C and the A's. Yeah, Gilo say more like Dansby Swatson. Dansby Bombson. Getting bombs. Here's Garrett Mitchell to 150. For the Brew Crew, that's going to be for Brian K. Stephen Carney, don't forget the uh, the Topps MVP promo. He's most likely going to win the AL MVP, right? I think they're bringing that back. So hold on to those. There's Jose Miranda to 199. Twins, that will be for Benjamin. The aqua lava look, the lava parallel looking really cool. Another box. What's the point of separate league MVPs? We all play the same game now. Yeah. I wonder. I, I wonder if that if that goes away. And it just becomes one MVP. Like the way basketball does it. Probably be Shoei Otani, right? But yeah, this the schedule is uh, is all balanced. Schedule is balanced. Everyone has there's universal D eight. Oh, 
Although maybe it'll just be, uh, maybe it'll just be there just because of tradition. Yeah, I gotta stop grabbing that first pack there. Five out of 50, Leo, I gotta wanna save the auto to the end of the box. Tor Orton in the middle to the end. Create a little more suspense. John Samson with the Pirates. Five out of 50, no suspense for you, it's right there. Orlando Arcia, two run home run. Here's Wilson Contreras to 75 for the Cardinals. That'll be for Chris Parent. Yeah, I like the new schedule too. It was already trending in that direction and it just might as well just do it. Kind of helps balance things out a little bit better too, I think. You know, I'll bet, going back to that awards thing, I wonder if, if, if and when baseball expands to 32 teams and we'll most likely have to re, re, uh, redo the division. I wonder if that's when they'll, they'll make changes in the awards to make just one MVP award. And we've got Ryan Nelson to 350. For Randy from the Dimebacks. There's some smaller transactions going across the uh, going across the ticker here that I didn't see. Some smaller moves happening here. According to MLB.com, these are the seven teams that are trade deadline winners. Always got to do a winners and losers thing, right? This writer, wh whoever this writer is, uh, it's William Leaked from MLB.com saying that the Astros are a winner. The Rangers probably belong on the winners list. You can certainly argue they should be, but they probably don't feel like winners now that they have to deal with Justin Verlander again. It's always felt a little weird not having Verlander in the Astros uniform, and now he's back, precisely when the Astros need him the most. The Astros rotation feels complete in a way it hasn't all season. And Verlander has been pitching well the last month or so. Rangers are obviously better with Max Scherzer and Jordan Montgomery. So they're hardly losers here, but the fact remains they had a chance to put away the semi-middling Astros for months now and did not. And now the Astros have Verlander back. This writer is saying Rays are winners. Rays' incredible start to the season led to a big division lead. Little by little eroded until the Orioles made it go away entirely, largely because the team, thanks to injuries, began to run out of starting pitching. But bringing Aaron Saval, who, con who uh, concerns about his underlying peripherals aside, has been terrific this year. It gives them quality innings at a time they need it the most. And then again, the Orioles and the Blue Jays did bring in a total of five Cardinals. Flaherty to the Orioles, 
And then Paul DeYoung, Jordan Hicks, Jansen Cabrera, and Chris Stratton went to the Blue Jays. Rex's Cubs are winners. This guy's saying one month ago, if you'd ask the question, what team will get the best hitter available at the deadline, it'd be difficult to find anyone who would have chosen the Cubs. But Jaimer Candelario, who we remind you has a World Series ring with the Cubs, he played five games in 2016 before being traded to the Tigers, might be the biggest bat who ended up shifting teams. He plays third base, a position where the Cubs desperately needed some help. And of note, the Brewers, and especially the Reds, went very small at the deadline. Neither looks that much better today than they looked last week, but the Cubs sure do. They've got an uphill climb. They've got the best run differential in the NL Central, are red hot, giving themselves a chance. Padres saying there's another winner. Marlins, another winner. Mets, maybe. Not in the way that you're thinking, but in terms of getting some, some, some assets back and the Angels, CJ Krohn, Grichuk, Giolito, Renato Lopez, down in, you know, they certainly shored up their team a lot there. All right, we got a Gunnar Henderson for the Orioles. That's Sean Maddock with the refractor Gunnar Henderson. He's pretty good, Orioles are pretty good. Eloy Jimenez for the White Sox, photo negative. That'll be for Jeremy Olsen. We gotta find some more Corbin Carrolls for Randy. We've seen some base, but we've not seen uh, any parallels. We certainly haven't seen any autos. We still have a lot of, a lot of break to go here. Yeah, that was interesting, right? The guy on the Tigers, I think uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, exercises no trade clause to not go to the Dodgers. The deals are all set and ready to go, and the last thing they had to do was, you know, just give them a call. The Tigers had to give them a call and say, hey, do you think we got a deal worked out for you to go to the Dodgers? Do you want to waive your no trade clause? Thought about it, he said, no. There's Logan O'Hoppy to 399 which was interesting. I don't know what his situation is. Maybe there's Gabriel Moreno, 391 out of 499 for the Blue Jays. Good for Brad. I don't know, maybe he has kids. Maybe he didn't want, well, no, it's summer, summer, so they'd still be in school. I don't know, maybe his family wanted to stay in Detroit. Maybe he didn't feel like moving. I'm sure he has his reasons. Maybe he had a bad experience in LA. Maybe there's someone on that team he doesn't like. Maybe it was just like, man, moving? It's kind of a hassle. Yeah, I wanted to stay in Detroit. I said no one ever. Well, someone did. Now there's at least one person, Grizzlebees, that has said, I am staying in Detroit. I mean, he must be a hero in Detroit now. You think he has to buy a meal for the rest of the season? Maybe not. Like Mike Petriello on the uh, on MLB.com is tracking every deadline deal. He's got 23, the 23 best deals of the 23 trade deadline. Rangers acquiring Max Scherzer. I think that's a good deal for the Mets too. Luis Angel Acuna is one of their one of their. It's got to be at least a top 15, top 20 prospect. And then Astros getting Verlander is the second one. Angels getting Giolito, Ronaldo Lopez from the White Sox. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I think they're going on 
Well, first of all, Scherzer is going to a a playoff team. Verlander is going going to the Astros, where they're used to. So I mean, I don't know. There must be. Maybe we'll get an interview from Eduardo Rodriguez of the Tigers. Maybe his next start, whenever that may be, and see what's going on. Right, yeah, Mets had zero issues eating money. They essentially paid $60 million for six years for Acuna. When's he going to get, when's he scheduled to get called up? Another season or two for Luis Angel? I've heard some argue that he's a better hitter than his brother Ronald. But, but without, like, he doesn't have that power yet, though. He just hasn't developed power. Here's a Logan O'Hoppy for the Angels. That's to 199. Stephen Carney with the Halos. He's 5'8. He listed at 5'8, which probably means he's 5'6. Maybe that's why the, the pop isn't hasn't developed just yet. Oh, look at this. Red Wave, two out of five, Sean Bouchard. That's a train whistle, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin with the Rockies. There you go, Kevin. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Nice. And there's Aaron Judge, nine out of 50, gold wave. I hit a frozen fracture. Do I do the train whistle in reverse? No, I, I would just, I would just, uh, I would do it as I was shivering. I'd be like, brr. <laughs> woo, woo, brr. It's cold. Yeah, you approve, yeah. Burr. 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 Just kind of do it really quickly. It's kind of cold, like, like you're, uh, I don't know, what, what would be the equivalent? It would be like uh, maybe you're getting the mail on a, on a cold day. There should be, should be some Dodgers pregame here. Let's see what they have to, see what the Dodgers pregame team have to say about the, about the trade deadline. All right. They should have done frozen taco fractures to negative five. This is a missed opportunity. I like that. I approve of that. I would love to pull a, a, a taco fracture today on Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Ooh, how nice would that be? Taco Tuesday! Woo -woo. Oh, man. I've got, I'm ready. That, that's my, that'll be my bit. 
Taco Tuesday. Ding ding. Taco Tuesday. Woo woo. Ooh. I'm ready. You hate that LeBron bit? It, that, it existed before LeBron. Remember how LeBron tried to copyright Taco Tuesday, but couldn't, and now it was on board in, in making Taco Tuesday available for everybody? Yeah, confirm. Tacos existed before LeBron. Tuesdays existed before LeBron. I can confirm that as well. And both eating tacos on a Tuesday have existed before LeBron. Here's Riley Green, purple, 150 out of 299, purple speckle. Right. I think that's that's the correct logic that I learned in my my philosophy logic classes. A equals B, B equals C, A equals C. I think, yes, maybe. That's what the uh, what my logic classes taught me. Or maybe didn't teach me as a case, maybe. If always equals B and B equals closing, I'm always closing. A equals C. There's Will Brennan, 284 to 499. Cleveland, this is for you. Goes to John G and the Guardians. We got an Aqua Trevor Story to 199. Good little ball flip there. Going to Boston, that'll be for John. There's a Michael Harris for Jeremy Taylor. Refractor, rookie refractor. Box 12 of 24. So according to Mike Petriello of MLB Network slash dot com, the fourth best trade, according to him, Blue Jays acquiring Jordan Hicks for some minor leaguers. Yeah, that was pretty solid. Rays, I, yeah, Rays getting Aaron Saval. Pretty solid. They had a lot of pitching injuries. I finally caught up with them after their hot start to the season. And this is why you play 162 games, ladies and gentlemen. Rangers getting Jordan Montgomery. Scherzer and Montgomery. It's a pretty good. Uh... It's a pretty good rotation. Let's look at their depth chart really quick. Yeah, Max Scherzer, Jordan Montgomery, John Gray. You know, you put Nathan Eovaldi there after he's off the IL, Andrew Heaney in the back of that rotation. That's really solid. You know, then you got relievers like Aroldis Chapman and Chris Stratton, Will Smith, pitcher Will Smith. Jonah Himes on the IL, but that's why they got Austin Hedges. Just a little bit of a backup. 
And that offense is great. Nathaniel Lowe, Marcus Simeon, Josh Young, Corey Seager. Got some guys in the outfield that are pretty good. You got Leo Tavares, who has a little pop, can steal some bases. Travis Jankowski, Adalas Garcia can hit the ball pretty well. Ezekiel Duran. Got some guys off the bench that are pretty solid. Yes, I think he did. Did he write the whole song? Or did he just write the Dr. Dre parts? The whole shebang? That wouldn't surprise me. It's James Altman. He's a pretty talented, pretty talented dude. There's E. Guy Rosario to 250. Hello Kitty Bobblehead Night. I'd be surprised at how well those Hello Kitty Bobbleheads do on the secondary market. And there's Marcus Wilson, 50 out of 199. Aqua Wave autograph for the Mariners. That's going to be for Derwin in Seattle. We've got Jordan Alvarez, Green Wave to 99 for the Strohs. That will be for Jason Griffin. There's a James Altman refractor going to Brandon and the Dodgers. Got that prism parallel. Now you got the refractor here. All right, another case. recap after I finish this case. Good luck. Box one of the second case in this two case break, 24 boxes total. So we did that first one, yeah, about an hour. So yeah, this, this, will, this will take another hour. Let's give myself a little space right here. Fangraphs have updated their playoff odds. Last updated August 1st, early in the morning. So I don't know if there's any, well, maybe by tomorrow, they'll might have some updated percentages. Maybe after all the, they, they calculate all the, uh, 
all the additional players that they have that have been moved by the trading deadline, but they still have the they still have the Braves as their World Series winners. They've got them 100% to make the playoffs, and they lead the league. World Series percent 24.4. Yeah, dude. So you could lose everything. Are we allowed to? Well, I'm not supposed to do this to rattle myself to right for a case. I just feel like that's... Uh, You're yelling at us. <laughs> um, they got the Dodgers at 96% to make the playoffs. Braves are the only team 100% to make the playoffs as of this morning. And they give the Dodgers a 12.9% chance to win the World Series. That's a big drop from 24.4%. Rays at 11.8%, Astros 11.6%, Rangers 5.5%, Blue Jays, Phillies, Padres, Orioles, Giants, Twins, Brewers, Diamondbacks, Marlins, Yankees, Mariners, Red Sox, Angels, Cubs, Reds, Guardians, Mets, Cardinals, so on and so forth. World Series, though, those are hard to, hard to predict. You making the playoffs is probably an easier thing to determine. All right, Marcus Strowman staying in Chicago. There's Alex Bregman, 197 out of 399. That'll be for the Astros. That's going to go to Jason. Another base Corbin Carroll. We didn't see much color or autos of Corbin Carroll in the first case, but maybe the second case. First auto of the second case, 403 out of 499, Michael Ciani, rookie auto for the Red Legs. That's gonna go to it's gonna go to Ben, last spot mojo. CJ Crone, photo negative. Rockies edition, that's going to go to Kevin. With the Angels now. We've got a Bobby Wood Jr. flipped around here. No, that's just, it says 121 down there. Standard base, but flipped around for some reason. depth chart updated. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the way this team's, I'm liking the way this team's looking. We got 
They've got the rotation as Kyle Bradish, Jack Flaherty, Dean Kramer, Kyle Gibson, Grayson Rodriguez. It's pretty solid. With the addition of Jack Flaherty, makes that rotation looks pretty solid. Not sure about their, is their bullpen okay? Let's see what's about these back there. They got Adley Rushman, Ryan O'Hearn, Adam Frazier, Ramon Urias, Gunnar Henderson, Austin Hayes. They'll have Cedric Mullins off the IL. Anthony Santander, Ryan Mountcastle, young team, hungry, good chemistry, I'm assuming. A lot of those players probably played together through, through the minors at one point or another. Do they have good defense? Pitching and defense wins championships, right? Even in baseball. Are towards the bottom of the pack, at, at least according to fielding percentage, whatever that's worth. They're at the top of the pack. They have a 989 fielding percentage. The lowest is 983. I don't know what, what this list is being sorted. How oh, they're sorting out this list here. No, I take that back. I think the Orioles actually have some of the a high fielding. They were in their top five in fielding percent. Diamondbacks, Cardinals, Rays, Orioles, Rangers are your top five. Oh, there's a Corbin Carroll refractor for Randy. It's a start, getting warmer. Your presumptive NL Rookie of the Year. And JJ Bladé, 21 out of 25 Marlins editions, going to Jonathan B. Um, Marlins uh, first round pick, top five pick I think, top ten. He's with, he's on the A's now, but that'll still go to Jonathan and the Fish. Here's Austin Hayes to 199. Aqua Lava. That's a cool bit of photography with that parallel. Nice, Sean Maddock and the Orioles. Ronald Acuna Jr., possible, uh, probable, odds-on favorite for NL uh, MVP. It goes to Jeremy Taylor and the Braves, and the and Tops is doing that uh, MVP buyback program again. So it could be one to hold on to at participating hobby shops. There's Vinny Pascantino, 299 for the Royals. That'll be for Zachary G.
All right, there's Lance Lynn wearing number 35. And that's Bellinger's old number. Very eager to see the uh, Lance Lynn's first start for my Dodgers. He's generally pretty durable. He's a little bit older. He's generally been pretty durable. Sort of a, I don't know, I feel like he's, I always liked Lance Lynn. I was, he always ended up on my fantasy baseball teams over the years. You know, seems like a, seems like a tough guy, right? Like a burly tough guy, you know? He's got some fight in him. Some intensity, some emotion. Maybe that rubs off on some of the uh, some of the quieter players. Could be a good chemistry move too. Dodgers sometimes have been accused in the last few years or so of being a little too workmanlike. You know, a little too businesslike. You know, but but I think having a some intensity on that team is nice too. Having Kike Hernandez back, I think, is great. He's going to add a lot of a lot of fun to the clubhouse. Some purple, we got some purple Marcus Stroman to 299. Purple speckle going to John G and the Cubbies. And there's your autograph, it's Jared Young. Rookie auto for the Cubs, John G. Got a Jonathan Aranda flipped around, but that's still card 121, but it's numbered to 99. Rays, Tristan. Where were the, uh, where were the Royals playing again? Oh, they're in Kansas City. So I wonder when Ryan Yarbrough, is he on a plane now? Yeah, Lance Lynn does have some pretty good career stats. And he's got some good underlying stats as well. This is where sometimes just looking at win-loss record or just looking at someone's ERA doesn't tell the whole story. I'll have to dig up those stats somewhere, but... Mm. This Dodgers blog has some additional information. He's got career highs in strikeouts, in K per nine. It's 10.8 K per nine ratio. So he's dragging out a lot of dudes, but the other numbers aren't very good. There's a lot of other stats that are like that, like the, some of these deeper numbers.
But hey, if you can just gobble up some innings too, I think that would be nice as well. I feel like I gotta look at the numbers. I feel like he's giving up, giving up a lot of like solo home runs. So he's pitching well, striking out dudes, but then like three or four solo home runs later and then, you know, and if those are the only hits you're giving up, right, then like, and you're not walking a lot of dudes, that still balloons your ERA, you know, you're striking out a lot of guys actually requires, you know, at least three pitches, right? So if he's getting deep into counts and then striking out guys, your pitch count goes down, you give up a couple solo homers, and next thing you know, you know, you're being pulled in the fourth inning. You're at 90 some odd pitches. You give up three or four runs and there you go. Even though your, your whip may be low and your strikeout rate may be high. Dodgers have a pretty good coaching staff and I know it didn't work out with, uh, didn't work out with Noah Syndergaard, but generally speaking, they've been able to, to to find and tweak some mechanics for a pitcher here and there and be able to create a little value out of them. They did that with Andrew Heaney last season. They did that with Tyler Anderson and eventually gave him, you know, helped them earn some big contracts elsewhere. It's Brett Beatty, photo negative for the Mets. That'll be for Brandon. Didn't work, uh, the reclamation project for Noah Syndergaard didn't work this year. You know, but maybe they can tweak some mechanics here for Lance Lynn and be able to, uh, to get something out of him. They gave Michael Grove a cutter, which for at least a few starts made him look like he was gonna be turning a corner, but had a really bad start last time around. I think he's gonna be more of a long relief guy for the Dodgers, maybe a spot starter when they need him, but he's pretty young. They gotta, they gotta he's gotta just get a little more consistent. And Oliver was saying earlier, he's just gotta hit his spots, should be fine. Ooh. So that MVP buyback program, Steven, I think they'll you can get even more back for parallels. But nice Otani to 399, receiving in the Angels. And then we've got an Alex Call. 246 out of 499. Alex, call me maybe. Jerry with the Nats. Alex, here's my number, so call me maybe. Jerry with the Nats. big that song was? It's huge. There were like people, people doing lip sync videos to those. It's a pretty fun song. What's Carly Rae Jepsen doing these days? Still making records? She is. Oh, do we, Gilo? I don't consider it until it's, until we're at the end of the seventh inning. 
we have to be going into the last two innings for me to even consider it. I feel like if you look at like MLB.com, they call it way too early. I think they start announcing it in the fifth inning. Way too early. They'll put a put a no hitter alert in their scoreboard. Oh, we're three outs away. All right, that's that's worth that's worth looking at. <laughs> Looks like it is the uh, the tribe that are that could be no hit. They're in Houston, down a couple runs, no hits. It's in the bottom of the eighth. So Astros can tack on some insurance runs. And are three outs away from a no-no. Is it a, a single pitcher no-no? It is. Framber Valdez. Looking for a solo no-no. Only one walk, seven strikeouts. When was that walk? When did he lose the perfect? We got a Volpe, rookie refractor for the Yankees, Matt Smith. And, and Lance's first pitch is a ball. Nice Jordan Walker, Prism, rookie Prism for the Cardinals, Chris Parent. And behind JD Martinez is Josh Bell with the Guardians to 150. Be for John G. The fish now. Joey Votto to 150. Purple. Ben. Nice. First strikeout for Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn starts today. And the autograph is Jeter Downs, former Dodger prospect. Red Sox edition going to John G. It's a big part of that Mookie Betts deal. I don't think it worked out for the Red Sox. I don't know if Jeter Downs is even on the Red Sox anymore. Nice play, Miguel Rojas. The Dodgers defense better than the White Sox defense? Maybe that'll help Lance Lynn a little bit. Ooh, you think former Met Miles Straw breaks up the no-no? 690, I believe, is the Dodgers network on DirecTV. 
Oh dear, Grizzleby saying, saying Jeter Downs tearing it up for the Nats and the Miners batting 165. Candelaria's four for four for the Cubbies. No one cares, Rex. Not when there's a no-hitter happening. That's the news of the day. Remember, we're a national broadcast. The varsity news of the day is the no-no. Not Jimer Candelario going four for four against, who are they playing? Cardinals? Reds? Against the Reds? Yeah, I have no love for the Astros, Rex. I'm happy for them to blow the no-hitter. I'm with, I'm with G-Lo. I think, uh, I think uh, Miles Straw, former Astro Miles Straw will, uh, will break up the no-hitter. That must be on MLB Network, right? I gotta flip channels here. There we go. And Mike, oh, Michael's not out there anymore. I think Fromber's only on 85 pitches when he started the inning. Not really efficient. There's a Masataka Yoshida refractor and a Manny Machado gold wave to 50. Padres, that'll be for John Samuelson. Yoshida, John G, Red Sox. Nice refractor there. Astros two outs away from a no-no. There's Byron Buxton to 250. Purple Chrome, he's fired up. Look at that. I like that. Ben with the Twins. And we got Masataka Yoshida autograph. Blue Auto, 95 out of 150 for the Red Sox. John, some nice color there. Miles Straw does not break up the no-no. Framber Valdez is now one hit away, or one out away from a solo no-hitter. Like Gallagher, Cam Gallagher maybe standing in his way. All right, final six boxes coming up. Is my feet ahead of yours? Sorry. All right, I've paused it. By how many seconds, John, or muted it? Should I uh, wait before I react to anything?
by like 20 seconds. I'll wait 20 seconds before I say anything. Oh, I see. Well, if you just go on MLB Network, they have it on right now. That's what I'm watching. Five, one, three. And that's 20 seconds, I think. And from Valdez with the no hitter. High fives all around. Yep, MLB Network generally will, will uh, on regional coverage nights, they will generally flip over, will generally flip over to the, uh, the game. I timed it perfectly. This is the kind of service that, that we bring, the added value that we bring as broadcasters to you, John Sanderson. Best in the state? I know these things are important. I'm sure other people were in the same boat as you too. It's the Astros 16th no hitter in franchise history. How many of those are, uh, are Nolan Ryan's? Yeah. Astros definitely needed more pitching at the deadline right now. Now they're gonna add, they're gonna have Verlander fly in tomorrow and join the team again. All right, well, there you go. Let's go back to the Dodger game. Dalton Varsho, photo negative for the Blue Jays. Brad. Yeah, under 100 pitches on that no hitter. <laughs> okay, that's that's news. Rex, that's 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 better than your usual JV news. That's some varsity news there. Bellinger apparently blacked out the uh, the Wrigley scoreboard. That's kind of funny. Did they get it back or part of the scoreboard? You think he broke some screens? I was at a Padres game a, a while ago and I think they were doing some stuff on the scoreboard and then like windows crashed. And uh, on the scoreboard was just like multiple windows cascading. I mean, some of you have, may have had that problem before, cascading on the screen with errors. There's Kettle Marte to 399, Randy with the Diamondbacks. All right, and speaking of the Cubs, Brandon Hughes, 155 out of 299. Purple, Speckle, Autograph, John G, and the Cubbies.
Ah, it's good to see Kike Hernandez back in a Dodgers uniform. I wonder if he got his number back. I don't know what number he was wearing before. I'm not good with numbers. Are you guys good with numbers? Uniform numbers? According to baseball reference, no. In his first handful of seasons with the Dodgers, he was number 14. So I wonder who's wearing 14 on the Dodgers now. Oh, I think the auto might be on this side. Let's do this side first. We got a Gunnar Henderson. That card flipped around. Ronald Acuna Jr. Ooh, Mets taking the lead on it. It'd be funny if the Mets like moved all those guys and ended up playing better. Sometimes that happens. It's weird. It's a weird phenomenon. No, oh, there's autographs on this side. It's Michael Harris. 005 out of 150 blue Ray Wave autograph for Jeremy Taylor. Nice rookie auto for the Bravos. Yeah, we're seeing some nice autos in this case. I agree. Trey Turner, 350 for the Fightin' Phils. That'll be for, for Nick, Nick R. And we've got a Jake McCarthy, Green Wave to 99. Randy from the Snakes. Strikeouts get everybody jumbo jacks tomorrow, which I've never, I've never tried, never done. How does that work? You I just go to a jack in the box and be like, hey, I want a large drink and a jumbo jack. Are you just telling that? <laughs> good one, right? Mm -hmm. Just smells good. Good hand sanding. I don't know what... This one up my lemon one. No? It's a, <laughs> this is watermelon, baby. Yes. Watermelon, some aloe. Doesn't dry your hands. Woo. I get the good stuff, folks. They already did once, Rex. I think it was a it was a bad move. I think in July, of, I'm looking it up right now, July of 2017, Cubs traded Candelario with Isaac Paredes in exchange for Alex Avila and Justin Wilson. What are those guys doing now? They're not starters. Yeah, Avila has since ret has, has retired. I don't think he's really he bounced around a team year to year. Justin Wilson never made any contributions. And then you traded more players to get Candelario back. I 
have kept him the entire time. And Paredes. I think Paredes is starting. Oh, J.J. Bolade, that's right. He's making some starts. He's out in center field, made a nice sliding catch. We've got an Adley Rushman refractor. And a Nolan Jones. Wave parallel for Kevin M and the Rockies. The Rushman refractor will go to Sean Maddock and the Baltimore Orioles. Got Spencer Torkelson, green wave to 99. That'll be for the Tigers, Michael. Little cat team mojo. Oh, and there's Pete Alonzo, ultraviolet. He wanted to show himself. You're turning violet, violet. That's going to be for the Mets. That's going to be for Brandon Swim. Nice. Short print, case hit. One per case, generally. It's either that or the relic, I think. Got Jared Young. Rookie auto for the Cubs, John G. Three boxes to go in this 24 box break. We made it. We're almost there. Seven homers on the night. I mean, four were off Ben Lively. And sporting a 5-2 ERA on the season. They were doing that against like Justin Verlander or something like that. Playoff caliber pitchers. Maybe a little more impressive. What's the most home runs in a game, you think? You know, it's regular in a standard nine inning game. It's double digits.
the Mexico City game, yeah, there's there's no uh, it's very uh, it's like in the atmosphere that stadium that city. So 350, Alex Bregman, Astros, Jason. Ah, Rex looked it up. Ten from the 1980 by the 1987 Blue Jays. Someone fact checked that. Sometimes Rex just grabs the first result he sees on the Google machine and it's like an old article. I think that's uh, that's got to be a short print. Yeah, 173 is the number on the back. And clearly a very different picture. Brandon with my Dodgers. Two nice. You can tell by the, the small little numbers at, at the end right there. A lot of home runs. Ten. What what inning is that Cubs game at? I think I saw the box score up. Uh, they're in the bottom of the eighth. So unless they hit a few home runs now, I don't know if they'll be tying that record. Unless do the Reds have like our are, are position players playing now, Rex? There's Gerard Encarnacion. No, they got Tyler Maley out there. I thought the Cubs are up 16 to 5. You would think there might be a little maybe a position player pitching here. Francisco Lindor to 125 for the Metropolitans. Maybe for Brandon S. Go James Alman. Use a little more pop from James Alman's bat here. Do we like this idea of, uh, is it VW, Volkswagen, it's the ID five or whatever that car is, has what they call sit to start. I'm sure you've seen the commercial, if you watch a little television. But you just sit down and the car starts. Do we like that? I'm not sure if I like that or not. What if I'm sitting in the car from, just had to grab something really quick. And it just starts? Leaning, getting to the driver's side, leaning to the passenger seat to grab like my, the phone that I left there or something like that. And it starts? If I don't want it to do that, there's Wander Franco. 399. For the Tampa Bay Rays, that'll be for Tristan. This 
And we got a Caleb Killian Cubs autograph for John. Photo negative Ken Waldachuk for the A's. That's going to be for Steven. We've got an Otani Prism parallel. Nice one for the Angels. Stephen Carney. Josh Young. Refractor. Rangers. Tristan. Final box coming up, 24th box. We made it. We'll do a little recap after this box. We're at the hour 54 and 45 second mark. So think of the timing. Is about right. The double off the wall. Almost a home run. Pitch clocks on dual cases. I'd be under it. The clock was probably two hours. Uh, maybe I'll get a little over it. But I was on it. Time is pretty much on time. Mr. Ruiz to 199. Aqua Lava. Al Mitchell to 299, purple speckle for the Pirates. That'll be for John. Samuelson. Another Otani for Steven. And Kyle Stowers is your final autograph. 387 out of 499, Sean with the Orioles. And Christian Alex, that's that. 
One hour, 58 minutes, five seconds. Boom. Got the break under two hours, under the pitch clock. Here was the first case. We had a train whistle there. Some nice autographs, some nice color. That was the first case. Second case, which you just saw. And even more stuff. Josh Young refractors, the Mookie Betts short print, Adley Rushman refractor, Michael Harris, Masataka Yoshida, the pink Otani, the orange JJ Blade, the Corbin Carroll refractor, and the Pete Alonzo ultraviolet. There you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with me. And I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.